Ross says, it is a dance of the moon, the ice moon, a very special moon that we all get to experience once in our lifetime. The moon that shuts us down, the moon as it moves around the wheel, this clock turning, ticking, closing down one thing after the other, step by step. So there is a specific mechanism inside of us in specific places that triggers what is the termination of our life's process. It is certain chemistries and codons and aspects of those codons. And it is a certain chemical component, these components that are released at specific times. So basically what they do is they slowly shut down the vehicle. Now they don't just and only shut it down. They prepare it in many ways for that approach of death itself. This is true across the board, even if there is going to be an accident that takes somebody's life, according to Ra. So this sequence and the five hexagrams that are involved in this sequence are there in the wheel and they're there in our designs. So what we're reaching into is Rave Cosmology Semester 3, Death, Dying, and Bardo Stages. This is Lesson 2, and that's from page 27. So it's something to see very clearly that month after month after month, the moon is constantly going through these particular gates. Here, we start with the 10. Okay. That was the 10. And now we have this movement to the 3, from stage 1 with the 10 to stage 2, the 3. This movement to the 3, we then go into the second gate. And then we go into from the second gate to the 29th gate. And then from the 29th gate, we move up to the 14th gate. So we have these stages of the uh, death process that are initiated by that ice moon. So every single person is initiated into the potential of their natural death through this sequence. Stage one is right here up at the top where we can see um, the 30th of January 2011 when Ra went into his stage. So we're going to go explore them piece by piece, following the moon. So here was stage one, gate 10, line two, the hermit. The withdrawal from life, it's the completion of form. Learning the successful sidestepping of behavioral requirements through isolation. Mercury exalted, where mental functions enrich aloneness. This is independent behavior through isolation. Mars in detriment, the angry exile, little typo there. Isolation to preserve independent behavior in the face of conditioning. So we can see the 30th of January, 2011 at 3.33 p.m. This 10th gate is the gate of behavior as we know. And the thing that's so extraordinary about the 10th gate as a roll gate, because yes, we know it's the most complex of all those roll gates because it's got so many different ways it can go. It's that the 10 opens up to integration with the 20, with the 34, with the 57. Here we have the role for survival, the role for survival. And as a love gate, remember it's transcendent as well as personal love. It does dual duty, the only love gate that does that. It's a gate of the potential to love oneself or not, but it's the gate of loving oneself in the world or not and being in life as well. So everything about this 10th gate is about the deepest identity connection to your life force itself. As this is the gate of behavior, this is the first trigger. In our stage one here, there again we have the description and here's the full time, that imprint there. This 10th gate is magical, this withdrawal. This withdrawal from life, see, withdrawal from life, and this readiness to have the correct behavior to leave the plane, to change the behavior. 
how different the behavior for life and the behavior for dying. They're different. So then we move to the three. The third gate is dealing with beginnings, dealing with the life force, dealing with mutation. Yeah, it's difficulty at the beginning. So if we move to when that happened, 9th of February, 2011 at 1245, here we have the third gate, pulse compression and magnetic field mutation. Fourth line is called charisma. We're learning about the innate quality which attracts valued guidance. Neptune exalts psychic uh, typo, attunement that magnetizes nurturing. A psychic energy which attracts nourishment and ensures ordering. Mars in detriment, where the demands of the ego lead to rejection. Confused energy that needs nourishment but is generally rejected. So we can see the third gate turns off its openness and its readiness for the vehicle to deal with anything new. It's shutting down the receptivity of the vehicle. It's shutting down, in essence, the whole mutative program. So no more mutation once you're dead. No mutation, no stagnation, or actually no mutation, it's now stagnation and death because it's shutting it all down. So no more ordering out of limitation. Everything's just shutting down. So you'll notice this term, again, pulse compression. The term is pulse compression for the three. And Ross says that this is the space between the pulses and it's getting narrowed. So basically, what that is doing is that it's turning out, off our fertile mutative capacity. That's what's getting turned off. So the compression of the pulse. It's very important to see that this third gate carries a real triggering influence because it goes beyond what is almost psychological. When you think about the way the 10th gate triggers, it triggers it through the behavior. Remember we were talking about behavior there? Triggers it through how quickly our behavior, because it's related to survival, that the behavior is reflected on by the personality. And if you know about what they say about Bardo stages is that you're reflecting, right, about what happened in your life. So the behavior is reflected on by the personality, because remember the personality is still hanging around even though the magnetic monopole and the design crystal are long gone. The personality is hanging around, <laughs> reflecting on its behavior. But when you get to the three, this is different. You're getting to the vehicle itself. And that moment that you deal with the vehicle, you deal with something that becomes concretized. Pulse compression is something that's going to take away your creative juices. So no more mutation in the body. So then we go from stage two to stage three in gate two. We move to the driver. This is the magnetic monopole and the second gate. And 10th of February, 2011, genius. This happened at 6.36 p.m. for Ra. It's the responsibility of this magnetic monopole to bring us in at the right place in the right time. That's its function, yeah? It's the arm of the streetcar. So here in stage three, what the two is doing, that ice moon is doing in the two, I should say, it's the coordinates for the door. It's our magnetic monopole alignment, what the two is. So here we have unconscious and unlearnable alignment of stimulus and response, the natural. Saturn exalts the inner strength to focus and realize. A natural gift for unlearnable knowing. Mars detriments, genius is madness. Knowledge exclusively as power for the enhancement of the ego, or the delusion that knowledge is power. So our magnetic monopole brings us into the right place at the right time. It's intended to drop us off in the right place at the right time. That's its job. So when you look uh, about at the movement to the second gate, it's about understanding that the monopole is taking this direction towards death. Towards death. The ice moon taking us towards death. 
So it's something to see that when the second gate is reached in this cycle and the monopole signals, what it's actually doing is it's preparing for the opening of a gate that is exactly opposite the 60th gate. It's the exit. It's the door. And it is there. That is the coordinates for the door for the exit through into death. We're going to click from the stage 3, the moon moving to stage 4, the 18th of February 2011. Once you get beyond that, once the monopole has set the direction in motion, you come to the most extraordinary of gates, this 29th gate. And now here, this, I love this gate. It's so fascinating to know more about this and then to reflect if you have this 29 in your life, reflect on how it shows up in your life. 29th gate is saying no to the cycle. And it's when we, the body, instead of saying yes to life, it starts to say no to life. It's, it's done. No more life. So here are the sixth line, stage four, confusion. The state, learning about the state that exists when momentum outstrips awareness. 18th of February, 2011, 11.22 AM. Mars exalted, driving blind and giving, given Mars's energy and determination, often blind luck. The power to persevere that makes no sense. Jupiter detriment, a tendency in confusion to withdraw rather than accept the condition and continue to persevere. The power in confusion to caution rather than saying yes. So at the core of how dual duality operates in the Maya is the 29, which is a decision gate. It's a yes, no gate. It's the gate that says yes to life. It's the gate that says yes to being human the gate that says yes to going through this process on this physical material plane. It's the great gate of yes. It's a generative force. And in the entire sacral center, Ross says there's nothing like this 29th gate. Absolutely nothing like it. So there's this enormous power to make a commitment with the 29 to the life experience. That saying yes to life has to be shut down and the ice moon does that. So this is the final locking the door and throwing away the key. Because if you go beyond this and you're in the sequence, there's no turning back. So there's no getting out of the death process. As time marches on, you come to your inevitable end. So as far as the body is concerned. In other words, this is the place where the point there is a point of no return. 29 saying yes or no to life. That's the trigger, the 29th gate. So it's a trigger not simply to saying no to the life experience, but saying yes to death, yes to dying. And the ability to say yes to dying is through that ice moon and the 29th gate. Personal pause. I can remember um, really feeling like I was on my deathbed in 2020 where I just couldn't move. I could not move. I could not. I could feel in the body this um, weakening and not wanting to go on and, and how much pain and suffering and understanding why people would want to, like really want to die. I'd have been suicidal ideation before. But I imagine at this point when you get to that place, um, maybe a kind of either calm settling in, you know, accepting one's fate. It's one of the ways my mind, I, my mind was identifying with. I can, I can see how this could come to an end and I would be okay with it because of, you know, letting go of that commitment to saying yes to life. Now, here we can say, saying no to the cycle, the weakening of the body, this moment that there is no longer a yes to the experience of life, the body is not strengthened anymore, so it flips and now starts to weaken. Ross says that the weakening is necessary because there's not going to be death without it. The body is going to begin to deteriorate. So, if you are somebody who works in hospice and you've got a 46 gate or you've got a 2946, somewhere else in Ra's materials, he came up, he was saying that these are people who can face that moment and move beyond it and still say yes because of the conditioning. For me personally, it's like, well, but when it's your time, it's your time, you know? So, um, I was just curious, interested in that because my daughter has the 
2946. My husband has the 46. You know, 46 is the mother gates for all fears of the mm, splenic center for the body dying. So it, it lends that influence before you get to this phase. <laughs> but once you get past this phase, there's no going back. Okay, the body begins to deteriorate. Let me check the chat here. Ra died March, yes, thank you for sharing. March 12th, 2011 at 6.30. So you can see we're, we're in February. He was still teaching right up until the day before, I believe, very close to his death. Ra, uh, Ra. hi, Naraya. Naraya says, I can say this is true. I've saved two people that were ODing. Interesting, yeah. And Lisa says, my mother has a 46. She's ushered so many people to the other side. Jean has the 46 and volunteered, volunteered at hospice to send patients away some time ago. Yeah, when I was younger, I did the hospice training. I was like 19 or something. And the moment I was placed in somebody's house with AIDS and they were dying, after that first session of being there with them, I never went back. I couldn't. My, my undefined splenic center, my own fears of death, really couldn't face it, couldn't handle it. The feeling that I got in that place of his home as he was passing. Okay, so the moment that we enter into from the 29, we're moving up to the last stage here, stage five, the ice moon in the 14. This is where we are surrendering to God, to the forces, to fate, destiny, karma, chaos, whatever it is you you know, anthropomorphize death as. This brings us to the energy for surrender. We know that this is the realm of Hades up here, where the 14 is. So it makes sense that the final stage would be in his realm. And it brings us the energy for surrender in the deepest way that one cannot do anything about it. So in the keynoting, where Ra it was the 24th of February, 2011, 2.20 p.m., disengagement and irreversible deterioration. This is the line of wealth and power at its most exalted. Sixth line is humility. Sun exalts the enlightened recognition that material success is God's will. Spirituality is the key to acceptance and the source of power. And when we have the detriment with earth, all manifestations of this position are essentially positive. The earth represents the existentialist recognition that material success was unavoidable and the humility engendered by such serendipity. Existentialism as the key to acceptance and the source of power. So what this 14 does, this energy for surrender in the deepest way that you can't do anything about it, it's not being able to reverse it or change it, all you can do at this stage is embrace it. Ross says, nothing more, nothing less. That's the stage. So what happens here is that you have this disengagement of the gearing and the driving of it. The 14, we know, impacts the driver. That's the opposite in the wheel of the magnetic monopole, that driver in the second gate. So it's like it takes away power from the driver, but it does more than that. It impacts the vehicle itself this ice moon. In other words, this driving force, driving force the moon, this gearing force, you know, this gear mechanism, pushing of this trident yeah, forward. Now it's just beginning to coast because it doesn't seem to be running under its own power anymore. We're just coasting, a petering out in that sense. Ra would talk about 14 as the gas pedal. You know, so there's no more gas. We're just coasting. This is the disengagement. And of course, because we are dealing with the energy that fuels the material self, deterioration, the deterioration that's taking place is a deterioration that's happening at the deepest level in the form. So in other words, it's happening regardless of where you look from cell to cell, organ to organ, from endocrine gland to endocrine gland, whatever it is that we're looking at. Here, what we're looking at here is that there is no longer this abundance that is being offered by the power of the 14. Remember, the 14 is 
wealth and power at its most exalted, the image of it is this loaded down wagon with tremendous wealth. Yeah, the 14 is a wealth gate. So at this point, it's when the wagon is emptying out. It's not no longer being replenished. It's just see, simply leaking away. It's your life drifting away. So everyone has a doorway that is separate. Once the sequence has been completed, that is, once the movement has gone from the 10 to the 14, in the movement of the moon beyond the sequence, sometime between the moon leaving the cusp of the 14 and before it can re-enter it, that's when actual death takes place. So everybody gets timed in the same way, but everyone has a separate doorway after that. So everybody releases through a specific doorway, is what he says. This is the sequence that is about preparation. That is, a preparation that sets one up on the permanent dying track, is how he wants to put it. And in setting one to the permanent dying track, setting one up and preparing one for the movement outwards, the journey, that journey of leaving the form behind. So this is the moment, the moment that the moon transits out of the sixth line of the 14th gate at any moment in the cycle, from that point onward, you can go. Okay, so it looks like it's not a percentage uh, arc, you know, specific, because if it were, everybody would die on the same day, and then we'd all be very uncomfortable. <laughs> Imagine it being in the 42, yeah? <laughs> oh my god, okay, so everybody's praying the day before the 42 hits, the moon hits the 42, because everybody would be dying on that day with the moon in the 42. Mm, yeah, that makes sense, okay. So, any point, oh, I'll have separate doorways. Oh, <laughs> we have more slides, hang on. We have this lock, okay, there. We have this connection between the design crystal and the magnetic monopole. There's the design crystal, and here's the magnetic monopole. And we get this, what we get between those two is a lock. The lock of the design and the monopole is one. The moment that they are one, that is when we have a physical death, where there is a stopping of the heart and we have a dead brain. So there's the personality crystal hanging around as those two leave. 